Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and this week we are going to talk about some more historical romances set in Scotland because those are just some of my favorites, and also because I am in Scotland right now while you're watching this, maybe. Like, if you're watching this on the day that it comes out, then I'm in Scotland right now, hopefully. And if not, well, I was in Scotland <laughs> when this video posted. So I read quite a few romances set in Scotland or featuring some Scots or something. I love a good Scotsman and romance, even if they're not in Scotland. So I'm going to talk to you about some that I've read recently, and then I'm going to tell you some that I want to read that I have here with me. Because, I mean, there's a ton that I want to read that I don't have, and we could be here all day. But the ones that I have here, I'll mention. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. And the first ones that I have are all from the same series. It is by Karen Hawkins, and that is the McLean Curse. So we have a family, the McLean family, and they are cursed. Basically, when they lose their temper, they, like, affect the weather, and all of them have it differently. So, like, one of them causes snowstorms, one of them causes, like, rain, but very localized. It smells like lilacs, which is very, very, like, precise. So, anyway, the first book is called How to Abduct a Highland Lord, and we are following Fiona McLean, who is the one who, like, it rains and it smells like lilacs, and it's very localized, like, it's just raining over your head and Black Jack Kincaid. So this does have a really nice little step back. It has lots of little vignettes going on. And this one, Fiona and Jack were in love a long time ago, and they were going to run away and get married, but Fiona bailed. And now she is abducting him to get married. Basically, there is about to be a clan feud between their two families because everyone thinks that his brother killed her brother, um, her youngest brother. So she abducts him to get married in order to avoid this feud, and he hates her. So that's kind of the premise of the story, and this is them, like, being married. So this one kind of annoyed me because Fiona literally abducts this man and, like, has them married by a priest, and he is barely conscious, and she just assumes that he is going to completely change his ways and be 100% devoted to their marriage. So Jack is definitely a jackass. And he is definitely not doing that. But at the same time, he is, you know, been forced into this marriage. So, hmm. So technically marriage of convenience, but mm, with a little twist. And at the same time, like, her brothers hate him and he hates her brothers. And it's kind of an annoying, like, thing because it's like, well, if they hate each other, like, how is this going to work anyway? Um, hmm. There's also, like, a strange, like, murder plot with, like, some woman who or not really murder plot, but like a strange plot with like this woman who is in love with Jack and all kinds of stuff. So there's kind of a lot going on. This one is not like 100% my favorite, but it was fine. I think it's a fine series starter as well. It kind of sets the ball rolling, I guess, but not my absolute favorite. All right, the next one that I have is To Scotland With Love, which is the second book in the series. I'm actually reading this one in order so far. I've read the first three in order. Um, and this is following Gregor McLean, and Gregor causes, like, winter storms, so snowstorms and stuff, even if it's not winter. That's his curse, and his best friend, Venetia. So they're best friends. They've been best friends forever, and Gregor goes to her house to pick her up, and her house is just in an uproar, but it always is because her family is very dramatic, and she is not. So he goes and finds out that Venetia's basically been kidnapped. Um, this guy has kidnapped her, and they are barreling toward Gretna Green right now, but she doesn't know that. She thinks that her mom is really sick, and that that's where they're going. But of course, with all the snow, their carriage overturns, they have an accident, and they end up at this inn where Gregor finds them. And they all end up getting snowed in at the end because Gregor is absolutely furious and is causing this storm. But, you know, Venetia thinks that Gregor is really attractive and, like, likes him, but she knows that it's going to ruin their friendship. And Gregor is kind of, like, seeing Venetia like this and realizing that he cares about her as well, but they're just basically not going to be together. Gregor doesn't want to get married anyway, and... This is, like, them being snowed in at the end, and they're trying to keep her identity a secret so no one knows that they are, you know, trapped in this end together, and there's a fun cast of characters, like, and Venetia is one of those people who, like, always thinks that she's, like, helping for the greater good, but, like, she doesn't get the whole story, so it's really not the case, and we see a lot of that, and Gregor is frustrated with her because of that. Um, and she's frustrated because Gregor doesn't want to help people, but she's not realizing that, like, Gregor is trying to let people make their own mistakes because she's just kind of trying to help, trying to help, trying to help, and even if it causes chaos, she doesn't care. So, 
there's all of that and this is kind of them being stuck in close quarters trying to figure everything out and honestly I really enjoyed this one it was a good friends to lovers I do like friends to lovers and I thought it was really fun I liked both characters um, even though of course as always people have semi annoying qualities but I thought it was really good I really enjoyed it this was definitely my favorite that I've read in the series so far right, so the last one by Karen Hawkins that I have right now is to uh, catch a Highlander and this is following Dougal McLean who causes like torrential downpours like very very bad when like very bad rainstorms and Sophia and Sophia's father is like a gambler and he basically wagers their house away um, and he comes home and he tells Sophia and tells her that Dougal is gonna be coming soon hopefully to look at the house because like it's his house now so Sophia comes up with the idea to cheat Dougal um, this is basically where it starts, is she's going to cheat Dougal, so they kind of make the house look really, really, really bad. They, like, dig holes in the driveway. They block up the chimneys, everything. And while she's talking about this to one of the servants, Dougal overhears. So he goes in knowing that that's the case. But he lets her, like, play out this little charade. And her end goal is to play a game of cards against him to win back the deed to the house. So they're playing, and they realize that there's a lot of attraction. And she's like, oh, but I'm not going to, like, do this. Like, I'm not going to be with him, whatever. So he knows that there's a lot of attraction. And he's like, shit, I'm attracted to her. And he's, like, trying to make it work, like, outside, like, sleeping in the barn and everything else. Because the house is just awful. So they end up playing their game. And then they play another game, like, for a kiss and stuff. And Sophia cheats. Um, so, and Dougal finds out. And he leaves. And he's, like, you know, gives her the deed to the house. And he's like, I'm leaving. So she follows him. And we have to see how that's going to play out. So I gave this book two stars. I didn't love it. Um, I didn't love that Sophia was lying from the, the onset. She was cheating him from the onset, and then she continues to do it. And, of course, like, he's like, you're cheating. You cheated, like, whatever. Well, yeah, she did. And she's like, well, I didn't mean it like that. Bitch, you cheated. Like, so I really didn't enjoy this just because, like, she was lying from the onset, like, very intentionally. Like, she was very intentionally lying. There's even a part where... They've messed at the house so bad, her dad falls down the stairs and breaks his leg, and she, like, doesn't even care. She's not even upset about any of that. She doesn't even apologize to him. And it's really frustrating. She's a very selfish character. Dougal is also quite a selfish character, but, like, he seems like the more redeemable one here because she lies and she cheats and she hurts people and she does not care. Okay, so the next one that I have is First Come Scandal by Julia Quinn. This is one of the Rokesby's books, so the Bridgerton prequels, and we have Georgie Bridgerton and Georgiana, but Georgie is what she's called, and then Nicholas Rokesby. So Georgie has kind of come about some scandal, basically. Someone kidnapped her for her dowry. Um, she was returned home unscathed, but now she needs to marry in order to save her reputation. So Nicholas is at like doctor training school in Edinburgh, I think, and Basically, his family calls him home, and they want him to marry Georgie um, to save her reputation. So definitely a marriage of convenience. Um, and the two of them are married because, of course, and then they embark on this excruciatingly long road trip back to Scotland um, because she's going to live in Scotland with him because they're married. And they have a house that someone gave them, so going up there. So part of it is kind of funny. They're in this carriage, and she has, like, three cats, and one of them's name is Cathead, which I think is a stupid name, but whatever. And Cathead hates being in the carriage, and he just screams, and he screams, and he screams, and it causes, like, you know, all of this chaos, and they make a hammock for him, all kinds of stuff. That part's kind of funny. The cats are the best part of this book. Um, and then the rest of it is just, like, them, like, traveling up there, and then, you know, him going to doctor training school, and her, like, thinking that she's a doctor, too, because she, like, glances through some medical texts and everything. Like, I don't know, the romance didn't feel super believable to me. Um, there, it's kind of formulaic and they're like waiting for a certain amount of time to pass before they kind of are able to get together and, and I just didn't love this. I was actually reading some reviews of this earlier today uh, and it seems like a lot of my friends loved it and it has really high ratings but I was like I really didn't enjoy this book. Um, the Rogue's Piece is kind of a miss series for me it seems like I've read two of them I haven't liked really either one but this might like clearly people are really enjoying this book like a lot of people whose reviews I really trust that I like watch every YouTube video they post look at all their Instagram yeah they are loving this book so maybe it's just me I don't know but this one was just not it for me but you know they do get like that cool road trip all the way across the country and everything and we're in the city of Edinburgh which I of course enjoy um, because I have been to Edinburgh and I kind of picture it so 
I mean, try it, definitely. Maybe it's just me that isn't liking it. This is like, I'm not loving all of these books, am I, that I'm talking about, but that's okay. So, you know. All right, the next one that I have is The Scott Betts' Wife by Kerrigan Byrne. I mentioned this in my Americans in the UK video as well. Um, this is a mistaken identity or hidden identity trope, and we have Samantha and Gavin Thorne. So Samantha uh, is pretending to be this girl named Allison who owns this land um, in order to keep the thorn from getting it, and she, like, is pretending to be Allison, so he thinks that she's Allison, and they're very attracted to one another, but she is, like, a badass, like, American girl, like, can wrangle cattle and all kinds of stuff, and all of this is happening. She actually killed her husband back in America because he was going to kill the real Allison, and his brothers are also out to get her, and that's kind of the story. I didn't love this. I don't love, mis like, hidden identity tropes. I don't love how the relationship starts out on a lie that I don't really feel like you can come back from because how are you going to come back from that you know um but of course Gavin is a, not like a super bad guy um he had a really bad life at the beginning the prologue is really really rough so definitely look up trigger warnings for that if that's something that you need to do um and he's like taking care of his mom and all kinds of stuff so there is a lot going on but you know like I said don't love the tropes and, like, that's just me. I, I think Kerrigan Byrne is a great writer. It's just, for me, the trope just didn't hit. Um, I do want to read the other books in this series, and I know there's definitely another Scottish one. Um, it's, like, this guy's brother. So I'm interested in reading that to see how it is. But, you know, this one is fine. And if you do enjoy, like, Hidden Identity and all that, like, this is going to be a good one for you. I just don't love it. I do love how they're, like, in kind of the wilds of Scotland, like, doing things instead of being, like, in a townhouse in Edinburgh or something, so I think that's a lot of fun, but yeah. The next one that I have is by Eloisa James, and that is Kiss Me Annabelle, so it's one of the Essex Sisters books, and the setback is just absolutely gorgeous on this one as well. Um, so Annabelle um, was always like the sister that had to deal with like money and finances growing up because their dad was just kind of a wastrel, is that the right word? I don't know. Um, so she wants to marry rich and she wants to marry English because she doesn't ever want to go back to Scotland. So of course she ends up with Ewan, the Scottish Earl of Ardmore. Um, she thinks that Ewan is poor and he is also Scottish, but he is like cutting quite the sway through the ton. Everyone is really liking him and Annabelle and him are kind of linked together um, in a gossip column. So they decide to road trip up to Scotland to his home and then once there they're going to decide if they get married. And along the way they stop to like live like normal people basically even though neither one of them know how to do that like they can't cook they don't know how to get like water and stuff just all kinds of things and it's a super high stress situation it's kind of funny but also like it's you know difficult for both of them I think especially Annabelle because her like worst fear is to be poor and he's like making her live like that for like it's like 24 hours 48 hours something like that but they are growing closer all the time and they are very attracted to one another it's just like difficult because she is terrified that she's going to like be poor living in scotland because she just assumes kind of that he's poor so it's interesting i really like the essex sisters i like that in a lot of these books um you do get bits and pieces of other people's like relationships and everything and this one we get a lot of imogene another one of the sisters and i really don't enjoy imogene she's kind of annoying and by kind of i mean very she's very annoying um so i would have liked to see someone that wasn't her but i do enjoy this story i think it's really fun and i think that it's definitely a good one in this series i don't think this is the first one i think this might be the second one but it's really good. I really like Elisa James's writing. It's always a lot of fun. It's very descriptive. You really feel like you're there. So I can't recommend this book enough, really. I do like it a lot. I just, um, I don't know, struggle with all of Imogene's parts. I really like Annabelle's story, though. All right, so next we have The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. So I waited for a very long time to pick this up for whatever reason, because I'm silly, and honestly, it's so good. I really like it. It was one of my favorites of 2021. So we are following Beth and Ian. Beth um, is engaged to this guy, and when Ian meets her, he tells her, like, don't marry this guy. So she decides not to, and she goes off to Paris to, like, live in frolic. And Ian decides to go to Paris as well. His brother lives there. But on the night that Ian leaves, there is a body found, and they kind of decide that it's Ian who did it. This inspector does. And apparently it is linked to another murder that happened, like, five years ago. And... 
there's a lot of like who done it going on and this inspector literally follows them to Paris and he is like set out to just ruin the Mackenzies. So her and Ian end up being married really quickly overnight in like a hotel in Paris and then they embark on a trip to Scotland to his home. And Ian has Asperger's syndrome, so he has trouble like looking people in the eye, he can't lie, there's quite a few things going on, and Beth is actually really compassionate and really understanding, and I really like both of their characters, I think Ian really is a sweetheart, and Beth, I think, means well, so Ian is kind of like, we are not going to worry about this murder mystery thing, like, let's just leave it, and Beth absolutely refuses to leave it, she is like, we are not leaving it, like, we have to figure out who did it. To the point that she like runs off to figure it out and it was actually quite the twist at the end i was very surprised by what happened and quite intrigued because i'm very interested to see like where the rest of the story goes there are like quite a few books in this series i think so i'm excited to continue reading it and i really did think that it was really good i'm not really doing it justice i like the murder mystery plot there was a lot going on but i thought that it all went together well and it didn't really detract from the rest of the story because sometimes if you have like a mystery plot of some sort i feel like that really just detracts from the story because the characters are spending so much time doing it but i really enjoyed this one all right, and the last one I have is Moonlight on My Mind by Jennifer McQuiston. So this one is following Julianne and Patrick. Julianne wrongly accused Patrick of the murder of his older brother, like almost a year ago or something. And he's disappeared, and she's finally managed to track him down way up in Scotland. Um, if you've ever read the books from this series, which I don't even remember what this series is called right now, but it was so good. Uh, I read another book from the series too. They're in this tiny little highland town of like Morag and he has become a vet up there and is just like living. So she tracks him down and she's trying to bring him home because they, she wants to prove that he's innocent. The trial is coming up and he is now an earl. So he agrees. They go back home to, you know, this, to England and this is kind of their relationship growing. She is putting a lot of trust in him. Actually, I think they might even get married. Yes, they do. They do get married. I'm an idiot. So they do get married because then she can't testify against him because it was her testimony that kind of pointed the finger at him anyway. And also, like, to save her reputation and everything else. But it was really good. I loved this. I thought it was really good. This is another one that definitely has a mystery plot running through it. Um, Julianne does a lot. Like, she's going to question people and she's, like, implementing people and all kinds of stuff. Like, there's just a lot going on. But it's still really good. I really like Patrick. I love all the animals that he's taking care of and everything. I love how instead of like making things harder for his family, he's just leaving. Um, I like going up to Morag to this tiny little town up in the Highlands and I think that it's really ballsy of Julianne to do all of that. And I just really enjoyed this book. I really enjoy this series actually. I think it's a lot of fun and I can't wait to finish reading it. I think I have one more book, two more books in it. I have one of them over there. So that is all of the books that I have right now that I have read recently, but I do have a couple that I want to mention that I plan on reading as well. All right, so I have two more by Karen Hawkins. So first we have The Laird Who Loved Me, and yes, and this is following Alexander, another of the McLeans, and this girl called Caitlin, and for she, like, they're flirting in London during the season, but somehow she embarrasses him, so he gets her invited to this house party and his plan is just to like humiliate and or ruin her. I think it sounds very interesting. And then the next book um, in that series is Sleepless in Scotland. And I, when I read the back of this, I am convinced that I have read this book before. So this is following Hugh McLean, I think, and a girl called Catriona. And she has a twin sister and her twin sister is going to like hide away in Hugh's coach or something. So she does it instead. And it's like one of those, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I really feel like I've read this book before, so we'll see. And then I have another one by Jennifer McQuiston. It is Summer is for Lovers. I think this actually takes place in Brighton, but we have um, David Cameron, who is a early Scotsman, and he's in Brighton. And I think that this is like a fake relationship thing, um, or maybe, maybe not, but it's like he's trying to teach her about passion before she gets married or something she wants to get married but he's definitely not going to marry her i think it's very interesting again oh look at that surf so yes beautiful step back beautiful books as usual and then i have um scott under the covers by suzanne enoch i read um 
it's getting Scott in here. So this is one of the Wild Wicked Scotsman series. It's these brothers, and they are in England because they have to marry English women um, before their sister gets married in order to save their home. And this is a kind of gambling one. I think it's the middle brother, Aiden, and it's he's like teaching this woman about like wagering and winning back her freedom or something. I really liked the first book in the series. I love the way that it was written. I thought it was so much fun. So I'm really excited to continue with this series. And this is book two, I think. So very excited to see how that one goes. And then the last one that I have that I'm gonna mention right now is The Many Sins of Lord Cameron. So this is about Cameron Mackenzie. And it is saying that it's like this woman and she's a spy and all kinds of stuff. I don't really know. But we met Cameron in the first one. So of course I'm gonna continue with this series. It's like they were gonna have an affair but they didn't and he vows to finish what they started many years ago and she's like a spy for the queen or something like that so super interesting so yeah those are now the books that I do want to read I will definitely get to all of these this year I'm confident that I will get to these this year um, and then maybe we'll have another Scottish books video <laughs> but that's all that I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later bye